Chicago Bears Central. That's Bobby in the building for the daily What's episode. The and it sounds like Bobby may be in the building for every daily episode next week as well. So be on the lookout yeah. for that. Uh, yeah, but on today's episode, we're going to talk about the returns of Kyler Gordon, Jaquan Brisker, what they can mean, uh, Chase Claypool and him learning that offense. And then Luke Getze seems like he's not going to move Tevin Jenkins back to the tackle position. We're we'll getting to all that and more on today's Chicago Bears Central. Now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. All right, Bobby, we got Jaquan Brisker and Kyler Gordon both returning from injury, bro. Concussion protocols at that. We've had, I've read an article too, like, I didn't realize how many concussions the Bears have had this season. We've had a lot of concussions on this roster this season, bro. (laughs) Um, What are you, what are you looking for the rookies to do in their return against what may be, what many people consider the best team in football right now, the Philadelphia Eagles? Man, maintain, maintain, and maintain. Cause these guys, they can knock, they can take the top off. You got big wide receiver AJ Brown. They got a quick shifty guy with a uh, uh Devontae Smith who got excellent route running and speed. These guys just gotta come back. And honestly, the last game without them against the Packers, the secondary played well. So these guys yeah. gotta come in and play well because. And then again, maintain because if they don't maintain, it's going to get ugly quick. <laughs> it's going to get ugly quick. That's for damn sure, bro. This game could be an ugly, ugly game for the Chicago Bears. Uh Jaquan Brisker and his playmaking ability um could be huge. And I and I think sometimes it's easy to to remember that we that we've been missing one of our best playmakers for a minute now. So to have him back, I think is huge. Yeah, I agree, because if you think about I like to look at Jaquan Brisker like a Jamal Adams type of safety, it's like a safety you can drop in the box, and he going to go hit the quarterback and make plays. For sure. And this guy's young. He still got room to grow, still got a high ceiling, in my opinion. So, man, he definitely going to be needed this week, especially with that run, with that run game that they got over there in Philadelphia. And keep in mind, Jaquan Brisker as well leads the Bears in sacks. <laughs> with the curve, which is crazy, bro. Bruh. That's wild. <laughs> that is wild as a rookie, though, and a safety. Yeah. But it's hey, we're gonna take it for now. We gonna right, take listen, it. it's, gonna, it's gonna be different with Jalen Carter on the roster next year, anyway. So we ain't even gonna worry about it. Oh, no. uh, you know, I'm just, you know, <laughs> I'm speaking it into existence, Thanks, brother. You gotta, bro. You gotta speak good things into the team. Uh, Man. Kyler Gordon, his season's been more up and down than Jaquan Brisker. Jaquan Brisker had a pretty consistent season. He, he's had a couple of games where he didn't look as, as good and, and maybe didn't make as much of an impact. But Kyler Gordon is really kind of gone. It started off bad, then he rolls up, then it kind of got bad there again for a little bo- a little while. What's your thoughts on Kyler Gordon the season he's had so far and what impact he can make coming back? Definitely better because at one point we was like, Brisket, he's that guy. But then Gordon, we was like, Gordon, we was like, can he? And then the first like four weeks, we was like, bro, what was Pose thinking? This guy looked like he can't think. He not in the right spot. His instincts yeah. is questionable. We seen all the Taekwondo, the dance moves and all that stuff. <laughs> we like, bro, the coordination is off. But then he yeah. started he start to trend upward and we're like, oh, snap. And then he contributed. At one point, I believe the Bears were fourth in the mm-hmm. defensive passing. So yeah. that was good. But uh, overall, I would say he recovered well, and is, he's looking pretty good for the future. For sure, for sure. I, I, I think it's, it's a, it's a learning curve, right, for every player. And I think sometimes as fans, we can, you know, put too much on a rookie, expect too much from a rookie right away to make an impact. He is a, at a position that is an impact position in the NFL, especially if you, if you're good to great at it. Um, but you know, as a rookie, he was, ex, he was exposed. They would, they yeah. targeted him in almost every game to start every the season, game. every, yeah, every single game, and you know, especially when. You have injuries and people in and out, and you have to play next to Kendall fucking Vidor. It's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be tough for you at times, bro. So uh, I like the way that Kyle, Kyler Gordon's trending, right? And and you know every every rookie is it's a different type of progression. Um, you know we'll see what he does with his first full off season, this upcoming off season, what he looks like in his sophomore year. But I do think that he's shown enough to just remind everyone why uh, Ryan Poles did pick him where he picked him at, but. Jaquan Brisker and Jack Sanborn have been the steal so far in that draft. Yes, yeah, sir. Definitely the steals, <laughs> man. Cause bro, now they not even pick they 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 still go at Gordon, but now you already know that it, all the attention the last few weeks that I seen when Kyler was out there has been pointed towards Vildor. 
So yeah. that's good, Kyler. Get him off your back, bro. Get him off your yeah. back. Let's and get him up off the team. Can we please get him <laughs> off the team? Can Kendall Vador just leave, Facts. bro? Like, like he just needs to go. The city of Chicago don't want you. Don't take no uh no uh portillos on your way out. Don't do none of that. Just go, bro. Just please leave, man. I hate Kendall Vador, bro. All I, right, I gave yo, the man three ass. weeks, bro. Three weeks to make an impact play, and he didn't do it. For real, he could have got his cut of revenue from that jersey sale, but he ain't get it. He ain't get it. He ain't get, get it. it. He ain't get it. All right. Next up, one of the acquisitions that the Bears did make uh, right before the trade deadline this season is getting Chase Claypool. Now, uh, it's been some – he hasn't made quite the impact that I think, again, Bears fans, we can be impatient. We just want to see this team win as much as possible. And it really hasn't been the impact that I think I thought that he would, that he would uh, make when he came to the roster, but it seems like – he, it's it's all about understanding the offense. Luke Getze had this to say. He can handle most offense. Now how fast that absorbs when he hears the play call, I'm sure that's not up to level. You've seen a couple of times where, oh, I've got to be over there instead of over, over there. But uh, then once he gets there, he's in good shape. What do you think about – because that's one thing that I don't think as like pundits here and we talk about sports, we don't talk about is like the understanding of the playbook. I think, you know, we, it's, it's easy for us sitting at home to think like, Hey, you, you insert this wide receiver. They're going to get it and go. What do you think about how long it's really, it's taking Claypool to really grasp that offense? I think, man, we just got to be patient. Like we are impatient as Chicago fans. That's for any right. Chicago team we root for. If, if we being honest, but if we're looking at what has transpired over time, Hey, Justin Fields was horrible the first four weeks. Darnell Mooney didn't get going, you know, until Justin Fields got right. He's going to take this guy some time, and I don't think – I think he's going to have some moments. I think he's shown some moments, but I don't think he's going to fully grasp that – grasp the playbook until they have an offseason to where they can put in some extra work during the offseason and get together as a, you know, a group because he got to flush out all of those years of Pittsburgh system. That's so true. it's, it's yeah. going to be tough for him. So – I know we don't like to hear the Chicago sports fans, but we got to have some patience. We got to have just a little bit. Yeah, and I, and I think, like, we we won't have these issues with him having an offseason and coming into next season. It won't be. Like, he'll have all season to learn the playbook, and I think they'll also build some things around him. You know, they also had this to say is that uh, they they have designed specific packages for Claypool uh, for him to learn quickly, but even then, you got to think that that got disrupted a little bit just by Darnell Mooney going down, right? You can you can do, you can design plays for, for people all day, but then if one of your biggest pieces goes down, it takes a little while uh, to overcome that. So you know we'll see. He's right now he's averaging two point four catches per game and four and a half targets per game, and he's and he's getting twenty two yards per game. He hasn't scored a touchdown yet. I'm gonna say I'm gonna go on record and say this: Chase Claypool gets his first touchdown Sunday. Okay, he's busting. I'm with you though because now the, and just like you mentioned, Darnell Mooney was getting the double teams. Now he out, so now Claypool about to get the double teams, which adds you know an extra stressor on him learning his offense or whatnot. But I'm with you. We definitely got to see him punch the ball in. That's Luke Gessy. Let's get creative. Y'all had a bye week. Come on, bro. Y'all had enough time to game plan. Let's see what y'all can do. Those are facts, and that's just how it goes. Now, uh, Luke Getze has also talked about Tevin Jenkins. Uh, you know, Tevin Jenkins came into the league as a tackle. He got moved to guard. He's done really good at guard. But he said this about him because there's been some questions on if he's going to move back to tackle eventually. I think he's a guy who could do it. But I think what is most important is that he continues to grow at where he's at. I think moving inside this year gave him an opportunity to find himself. And I think he has. He's done a really nice job of owning that role and has an opportunity to be a really good guy on the inside. So I don't think there's any interest to try and move him somewhere else. But I think he's capable of doing that. What do you what? A, we started off the season. It's been such a – I think we forget at the – well, even before the season, like, Tevin Jenkins being moved. What is – like, the, the, the Bears don't like him. There are some issues going on there. But then immediately when he came back, when he was healthy, he almost won that starting position Bro. right away, and they've bet mm -hmm. on him since then. Do you think uh, Tevin Jenkins' long-term best position is at tackle, or do you think it's at guard? I say just keep him at guard, man. Um, we previously spoke on it, me, you, and C-Dub, on another show, like – if you can solidify certain spots on the line that, you know, eliminate some of the question marks you have sure. going in into the, uh, the off season, you know what I'm saying? We got left tackle with Braxton, you know what I'm saying? And then you got a uh, right guard with Tevin Jenkins. Now what I will be doing, if I was the bears, you know, Riley reef ain't going to be here because of age and he hasn't been that damn good. You know, you know what you're going to get out of Borum. To me, he's more of a backup yeah. than a starter. 
So let that man develop at guard and then see if you can get anything out of Alex Leatherwood to sh- to erase another question mark and give a get another answer. See what the hell this kid can do. He was a first round draft pick for a reason, but overall, just let Tevin Jenkins develop and solidify his role as a starting guard. That's that's what I would do. That's a fact. That's a fact. I I I, I you know me. I've I've done a complete one eighty on Tevin Jenkins. I me was too. really low on Tevin Jenkins, bro. And then I can't correct me if I'm wrong. It was like the second or third game of the season. I, maybe it was even before then that it, it, he. I remember he pancaked the dude, and I was like. <laughs> All right, listen. Let me start. Let me start paying attention a little bit more to this Jenkins Facts. character. But he's he's good. I have no issues with Tevin Jenkins, um, especially when you look at improving the other spots on the offensive line. Keep in mind too, like this offensive line, ne- we never got to see what the version of this offensive line that Luke Getzey wanted to have because Lucas Patrick ass couldn't stay healthy. That the one game he he gets his position that we expected him to start at, Bruh. he went he went down in the first quarter. So Bruh. you know it is what it is. There, um, I, I when to see what Ryan Poles does with this offensive line and how a player like him, um, you mentioned Larry Bourne, Braxton Jones. Like I do think Larry Bourne, I agree with you is more of a backup than, than a starter, but I do think we got Tevin Jenkins. We got uh Braxton Jones. They are going to be starters. I think on this offensive line and bring that continuity that way. And I can't see what they look like with improvements next to them. Cause I think, I think we have the, I think we have the bones right of, of, a, yep. of those two pieces there on the offensive line and then see what we can do elsewhere. So. I'm with you on that, bro. And at one point, we was like, bro, we was calling like Luke Gassi and Eberflus. Stop yeah. fucking switching uh, Jenkins and Lucas Patrick, please. Yeah. We want to see more Jenkins. We tired of Patrick. He getting on our nerves. <laughs> so <laughs> let's go, uh, Jenkins. We rooting for you now. We, we yeah. Bro. Bro, is Sam Mustard for back next season, bro? Because I like every time we talk about the offensive line, we got to talk about Musty dumbass, bro. Bro, and that's I, I I hope not, but you know what I'm saying? Because me personally, if I'm the Bears, I go out and get a veteran center. That's somebody yeah. that can pair up well with your young quarterback, and then who also will have the experience and the command to help his other guys on the offensive line. I say for go sure. for experience on that center spot if for you sure, can. For sure. For sure. I, I can't wait to see what this team improves. Like, and for those that are asking, because we've been getting a lot of questions, I'm already taking down draft prospects. I think I got about hey. 20 on the list already. Uh, I've been doing it, and I'm going to do a lot more research over bowl weekend as well. I've actually been looking at some prospects in Division II schools as well, because I think they're – I think there could Nobody be some steals in out. those. Yeah. yeah, I think there could be some steals down there in, in, in the latter half of the draft. So really looking forward to bringing that draft coverage here um, and kind of doing what I did over at Chicago Bulls Central, but bringing it over here for the Bears because Blech. i tell you what, I, I've been seeing some prospects that I'm like, hey, man, I, I, I even checked some mock drafts. I'm like, hey, man, these people ain't popping up on too many radars. The Bears could get a no, steal. No, real. Come on now. Let's get Come some old steals, Post. We, you got some. Let's get some more. <laughs> Let's get some more. Listen, Hey, I want, how many do you think that Ryan Poles is going to turn the draft picks that we have into more? We started off last draft with six. We ended up with what was it, eleven draft picks when it was all said and done, plus the players that he ended up signing that were undrafted. What do you think? What do you want to see, Ryan Poles? I'm at this point. If we get the second overall pick, I don't want to see them move that. I want to see them go ahead and draft Carter or Anderson and just roll that out. But do you think he does some other things with the later picks to kind of turn those into other picks also? I'm with you. You'd, I wouldn't be mad at uh, Will Anderson or Carter. I say if you solidify that second pick, you take that generational talent. I would not be yeah. mad at either pick, but I'm with you. On the, on the later rounds, we can definitely go ahead and recoup some stuff because we've seen what he can do. We've seen how he, he can evaluate some talent. Like with the undra- Even if you just pick off the undrafted guys, you got an undrafted rookie in Jalen Jones who came in and played solid. And then you mm-hmm. got an undrafted rookie. The come on, man. The Sandman, he looking like he vying for a starting spot next season. He's been outstanding mm-hmm. doing his thing. So you know the man can evaluate some talent as of right now. We can't get so high because I believe you said it once before in 2018. We thought Mac Nagy was the guy. Then his visor mm-hmm. and his his Madden play calling came mm-hmm. out of nowhere and blindsided everybody and threw everything off. So we got we're gonna pump the brakes a little bit on pose, but so mm-hmm. far, so good, man. Yeah, so far so good. You know, we gotta wait to the end of the season for C Dub <laughs> to finally hear, reveal his genius of jackass rating. Cause that's <laughs> <laughs> for real. We gotta hear it. You already yeah, know. Yeah, we gotta hear it, man. That's funny, man. Anything left though before we go for today, brother? I was just gonna say, man. Uh, Chicago Bears, please play Alex Leatherwood a little bit more. I understand y'all want to go with a little bit more continuity and Riley Reef as the guy. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Borum. 
but they not the future in my opinion. I would say give Alex Leatherwood a shot in the limited, the 10 snaps y'all gave him. He was a part of a 56-yard pass to EQ, a 49-yard pass to Harry, and he looked like he improving on that footwork. Y'all know sometimes a change of scenery will do well for some people. So let's see if this change of scenery right here with some good coaching can help him out. I test him out. This is audition right here for the last four weeks. Yeah, I mean, the thing, the fact of the matter is, is that Alex Leatherwood is still extremely young. Like He's in his second year, right? So mm -hmm. as much as you can say anything about Tevin, as much as you can say anything about Borm and Braxton, you can apply that to Alex Leatherwood as well. As long as he's healthy, he needs to be out there. And the 10 snaps that you gave him, I understand wanting to start it off a little slower, letting him get up to speed. Uh, he was out of football for a while. I understand all of that. But, at the end, but when it comes to Leatherwood, like I see – another piece that they can use when we're talking about the bones of that offensive line and what, what they can use to fill that out. Alex Leatherwood has to be a part of that going forward. Has to that's, be, bro. And that's what I'm saying, because if you, if you, if you, if you find out what the hell he can be, you'd be like, Hey, there's one more check. We good. Now let's find us a center and a left guard. Instead of center, left guard and right tackle. Hey, you should be yeah, solid. Sure. Now to, I, I got to ask this because we're talking about it. Another player that we did pick up, that's question marks out there. Nikhil Harry, how, what do you want to see from Nikhil Harry the rest of the four games of the season? He's going to have a unique opportunity, at least you would think, with as many injuries as we have down there in that wide receiver position. Do you think Nikhil Harry can do enough to where he's back on the team next season? Do you think that you haven't seen enough, you want to see him go? How, what's your feelings on Nikhil Harry right now? I want to see more, bro. I'm going to keep it a buck. You gave it, bro, you gave up a seven-round pick. No one really cares. Then there's not no most seven round picks. Let's keep it a buck. They go be on special teams when you pick them up. This guy you gave him up for a seven round pick. He was picked, drafted by the Patriots in the first round. And from what I've seen, the guy has the ability to make plays. He did it in the Dallas game. He did it in the Green Bay Packers game with limited snaps. See what you got into him. But I'm gonna throw this last one out here. I know you ain't asked, but I need to see. I want to see more availers too. I don't think Byron Pringle sure. and EQ sure. are the future, but I want I I rather you know try to see what we got in the younger guys. Y'all draft the Valus third round. Let's see if Dropsy Jones can can we drop the Dropsy and give him his first name back. <laughs> do you, so when it comes to Valus next season, do you do you think he's going to be in the game as a receiver? Or do you think his future, at least initially for the Bears, is more on special teams? He needs to make his name on special teams and then work his way into the receiver core. Do you want to see both? How do you feel about that? I would go with both, bro. Um, but he has to earn it. I don't expect him to just give it to him. But when he has the opportunities, he has to take advantage of because he competing. You know what I'm saying? In any in, in the NFL, you got to compete. And they're going to put out the players that's making the most plays and giving the team the best chance to win. And muffing punts and dropping good passes is not going to help his case. Hey, listen, I got nothing to add to that. You hit the nail on the head there. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I still like when you look at Valius's speed, right? The thing, like, the little bit that we've seen of when he actually is not dropping balls and holding on to them, <laughs> you can see that he does have what could be big playmaking speed. Like, I'm not necessarily saying he's, he's ever going to be a featured wide receiver or anything like that. If he does, shout out to him. But th the speed that he has and when he, when, he, when he secures the ball and the way that he's able to change direction with that speed, too, because those are two different things. There are a lot yep. of people who are fast running in a straight line, but the moment mm -hmm. they, get, they get off course – they can't regain that speed. Vegas has that. Yep. I just I just want to see him be able to like the 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 prospect of it, the potential of it is one thing. We need you already coming into the league as an older rookie, right? So yep. because of that, I think the leash on you is a little bit shorter if you do fail because they're right or wrong, they're going to be people who don't believe in the potential because you're already starting off so much older than some rookies start off. Um again, as we said, you know, even with Kyler Gordon and things like that, like it's easy to think that a trajectory of a rookie is, is straightforward. It's not always that. And even if he if he finishes the season strong and has a strong training camp, I, I don't think there's any – he's at risk to be cut or anything like that. I do think they're going to give him an opportunity because they did draft him. And Ryan Pohl seemed high on him when he drafted him. But they just got to get it together, bro. Like, that, that the speed that he has, the, the way he's able to change direction, um, it, it can – he can break – you can absolutely see him break some plays for the Bears in key games. But, listen – I, we got to actually see. I, like I've been saying with the Bulls, you got to show me. I, I look, at this point, you got to show me. And so I hope, I hope, I hope he does that soon.
I'm with you, bro. You got to show me. I don't care what you're saying. If you're doing a lot of lip service is what I've been calling it lately, and that's very popular around Chicago sports right now. Everybody's saying the right shit in the media, but they ain't doing nothing. Show bro, me. <laughs> show please me. me. <laughs> please tell me you saw Jerry Reinsdorf make a joke about the White Sox not winning any baseball games. Did no, you see that? But I'm, no, but I bet oh, it was horrible. Oh, my God, bro. He literally was like, well, we might as well. I can't remember. What he, oh, one thing we do great is our activism. It's not like we're winning baseball games. Literally, bro, I, I, if I would have, I would have strangled the holy shit. I don't know the, the Bears aren't a Reinsdorf-owned team, but it's just like, bro, <laughs> why do Chicago sports do this to me, bro? Like, it, it doesn't make any sense. Drives how, you up a wall, bro. Bro, like, I literally wanted to reach through what, like, I was listening and, and choke the hell out of him, bro. Like, because what? <laughs> What the fuck is wrong with you, Jerry, That's bro? terrible, like, on, bro. Man. That's terrible. And that's a disservice to your fans, bro. Stop buying she, the tickets. She, <laughs> motherfucker, bro. Stop buying crazy, the tickets, man. bro. That For shit real. crazy. But uh, <laughs> that aside, <laughs> I'm sorry. Chicago sports PTSD is real around. Here. I got you. Oh. Dead, dead ass. Dead ass. All right, man. Uh, I know we're going to do a prediction show tomorrow with Bobby, so we don't want to touch too much into what you expect from the Bears. But I'll tell you this before we go. I got to say this. Don't get my quarterback killed on Sunday. Do Please. not get my quarterback killed on Sunday. Two, if he gets two sacks and, and on back-to-back -back possessions, we got, just take him out the game. Don't even worry about it. Just take him out <laughs> the game. I'm telling you, bro. Don't, don't get my quarterback killed, bro. The Eagles are dangerous. This, this bro, game is ugly, bro. They solid on every level defensively. <laughs> But that's for the no. prediction show, y'all. Yeah, we'll get into that tomorrow. So make sure you guys are tuned in tomorrow for the prediction show where it's going to be all three of us holding it down, talking about that Eagles game. Otherwise, Bobby, go ahead and give them to him, brother. Hey, if you want more from me and C-Dub, hit us up on Shy Boys Podcast. My boy, C-Dub, a lot of y'all been calling him Baby Stacy King. I'm going to run with it. That's who he is. Fuck it. He called live call the games. Join us sometime. We turn up in there. We have shots. And we do what we do. We don't charge y'all for shots either. We do it for the fun. So there you go. <laughs> and follow my man Hayes on all social media platforms at CEO Hayes. And hit that damn subscribe button on Chicago Bulls Central. We on the road to 10K. Let's go. Yes. Yes. Got to get to 10K on Chicago Bulls Central. So if you're not subscribed over there, go over there and subscribe Please. as well. Uh, but anyway, make sure you follow us collectively at Shy Bear Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. Chicago Bear Central, gmail.com. Last, you want to leave a text and our voicemail. The number to do so, 773 Two four two nine three three six. Oh, bam! I got that mug memorized. Hey, that. hey. Uh, but otherwise, like we like to end everything on bear down. Love you guys, man.